What's up everybody, Mark of Coffee and Toys here and welcome back to the channel for another action figure unboxing and review. Today's a special one folks because I have been waiting for these figures for well over a year and I'm sure a lot of you have been as well. If you're not familiar with a Kickstarter from December of 2022, yes, it's been over a year since this Kickstarter was fully funded and then some. And that Kickstarter, of course, was the Skeletron Mark II uh, from Action Force back in the 80s. Action Force, of course, being the G.I. Joe counterpart in the United Kingdom. And today, we get to unbox their next wave of releases from that Kickstarter, and I cannot get, wait to get into it. So with that being said, make sure you hit that like button, make sure you hit the bell notification set to all notifications, and let's get to it. This is gonna be a great one today, folks. Yes, so like I mentioned in the intro, the Skeletron Mark II uh, RoboSkull ship, all that stuff, is a production of Grindstone Toys and their Faction 4 series. Matter of fact, I'm just going to read it right here. It's Skeletron is the brand uh, powered by Marauder Task Force. If you're not familiar with Marauder Task Force, go check those guys out. They make some fantastic 4-inch and 6-inch uh, vintage-inspired, G.I. Joe-inspired action figures and accessories. I'll make sure to link them down in the description below. Hit Marauders up. They're awesome. I've got some Marauders we're going to do some comparisons against today. But back to Skeletron uh, from the Action Force series of G.I. Joe, like I mentioned earlier. Um, the rights were purchased to actually... Uh, I don't know who held Skeletron, uh, if it was Palatoy or who held the original Skeletron... Uh, rights, IP, stuff like that. It was purchased and the new company moving forward has made these modern era action figures both in four inch and six inch scale. Now today we're gonna to be reviewing their two four inch style offering of figures. These are the first two four inch figures uh, with modern era G.I. Joe type articulation. And we're also going to review their vintage O-ring style figure, which looks fantastic and actually has a throwback, eh, I shouldn't call it a throwback, has something to do with Call Sign Longbow, whose shirt I'm sporting, by the way, um, who are also bringing out some O-ring figures this year. They did a collab on this uh, vintage O-ring figure. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get these figures out so you can see them, and then we're gonna talk about each one of them. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're coming back, welcome back. Uh, my name's Mark, I'm with Coffee and Toys, and I review action figures from my childhood that I liked, whether they be vintage figures or vintage inspired figures being released today. And that can be Masters of the Universe, G.I. Joe, of course, Star Wars, wrestling figures, Transformers. If I played with it as a kid, I've probably got it somewhere in this room. But that being said, we have three figures we're gonna look at today. I will make sure to split the video up so you, if you want, if there's a particular figure you wanna see, we will jump right to that. But we have got a lot to get into today, so I'm just gonna show them off real quick, starting with this guy. It's awesome. We have Red Shadow's Wolf Trooper, one of the two primary figures that are being released in the Skeletron uh, lineup. And we'll go over all this. We'll go over the card art, and then I will actually unbox it because I am an a, a out-of-box collector. But man, this looks fantastic. So we have Wolf Trooper. And the other four-inch uh, modern era style figure is Gyre, Roof. Gyre Wolf. Man, say that three times fast. Um, this one's uh, a very special feature or figure for a lot of people, and I will talk about that during the review as well. So we have those two modern era style G.I. Joe inspired, inspired figures, and then I'm so excited, I'm getting tongue-tied. And then finally, the one that I'm really looking forward to because it's so vintage style, is the O-ring style of the Wolf Trooper as well. And this looks fantastic. And again, we are going to unbox all three of these figures on the channel today. We're gonna go over them, we're gonna see what we like, what we don't like, we're gonna do some comparisons, and it's just gonna be a fantastic time. So make sure you hit that like button because it really helps out the channel. I wanna make sure as many people see this video as possible. So if you can, share it out, that helps a lot too. Make sure you check me out on Twitter. I'm at, or X, whatever you wanna call it nowadays. I am at coffee underscore in underscore toys. I post a lot of stuff on there, and you can find me on Facebook as well, Coffee and Toys. So with that being said, we're gonna start off with the modern era style figures first, so let's just jump on over and get down to it. Okay, up first, 
Robo Skull Mark II Red Shadows Wolf Trooper. This is from Skeletron. It is their Faction 4 series is what it's called. Age is 14 plus. Um, just a real quick, if you don't know why they do 14 plus, it's so that they can get around the actual safety requirements that are uh, set in place if you sell toys in the U.S. and you try to sell them like a G.I. Joe, for example, let's say a classified series figure. You have to market it to, for safety standards. If they're going to sell it to younger kids, potentially, they have to set it at a lower age, which means it's really difficult to make. That's why you have those gummy weapons, so to speak. But if you make a figure a collectible and you set it to ages 14 plus, you can get away with some sharper edges on weapons, um, making them a little uh, more stiff, less uh, gummy, so to speak. And so I believe that's the reason they went this route. Of course, we do have the warning choking hazard, small parts, adult collectible. And just to tell you right now, first thing first, this is some, this card art, this card back rather is solid. You can see it's got a little bit of a warp to it, but nothing major. I mean, this card art is very, very firm. Uh, reminiscent of what we've been told the new retro cards for classified would be. Or even if you got the, if you back the His Tank and you got the Retro Cobra Commander, uh, the card art is like that. It's very thick. But of course, we have Red Shadow's Wolf Trooper here. And you can see that he does come with some accessories. Does appear to have a double uh, plastic encasing there. And yeah, this is a modern style figure. It's got some great design to it, just looking at in the package. And yeah, you got that Skeletron logo right there, Faction 4 series. Wonderful artwork. This artwork is spectacular. The space background, I don't want to open this, to be honest, but I've only got one set, so you know me, I got to open it. And of course, you got the Skeletron, or the Red Shadows logo, I'm assuming is what that is. Spinning it around to the back, oh my gosh, it's awesome. So you can see right now, we do have the lineup of figures you have the action figures, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven figures in the line, and of course the RoboSkull uh, aircraft. My goodness, this is fantastic. Now let's just get in here and, and check out Wolf Trooper. This is data file, RS002, primary military speciality, um, or specialty, airborne infantry, secondary military speciality, aerospace pilot. Um... Wow, just awesome. I'm going to give you a minute if you want to read that over. And of course, down here at the bottom, we do have the UPC barcode. You can see we are uh, part of the Marauder Task Force, that collaboration with them. Gyre Wolf, Jungle Wolf, all these people are... Oh, here we go. And Red Weasel illustrations are by Ken Kelly. Robuskull illustration by Ian Kennedy. www.skeletron.com, powered by Marauder Task Force. In collaboration with Spartan Toys, 2023 Marauder GR, all rights reserved. So awesome. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to take that long, but with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, let's get this figure out of the package and really see what this Wolf Trooper is all about. Okay, we have the Wolf Trooper out of the package. And again, this is a modern era style, G.I. Joe style figure with, uh, it's four inches tall. And matter of fact, let's just confirm that. Uh, I didn't actually measure it. I'm assuming it's four inches tall. Yep, standing just a hair over four inches, about four and a quarter. So it is just a little bit taller, but not by much. Might even be less than four and a quarter, but man, this figure just looks fantastic. I, I am impressed already with the quality of the build. Now I collect a lot of different figures. I collect uh, a lot of third party stuff. And this one, this one of all the figures that, you know, I have that aren't just from Hasbro. This is the first figure that feels like this was made by Hasbro. The quality in this figure is second to none. This feels like a Hasbro made figure. So let's go over the, uh, the articulation. Of course, it can, the head can turn completely around and, you know, full 360. Well, 360, yeah, it can still turn 360 into those web gears getting a little bit in the way. Does have an elbow bend, single elbow joint, wrist articulation. 360, no problem there. Both arms are that way. Uh, we do have a torso twist, or I'm sorry, a hip. Would this be hip or torso? I guess this would be hip. Uh, we do not have a torso bend. We do have uh, double jointed knees. As you can see, they are pinned. 
And these joints are solid. Uh, we do have rocker ankles, it looks like. This is, I, I'm telling you folks, this is a quality, quality figure. The detail on it is fantastic. I mean, it's, it's reds and blacks for the most part. We have some silver highlights, but man, it's getting the job done. That looks like it's going to be a harness for his pistol. It's molded into the thigh. And of course, the legs do have that. Oh, they do have a thigh cut as well. So that is very cool. We do have a thigh cut as well. And it's hidden beautifully because I didn't realize this, uh, this hides it very well. Let me see if I can... So you can see how well it's hidden. Here we go. I'm going to give you guys a chance to get close up on the face of this guy. Very, very cool. See that Skeletron logo? The web gear can come off, it looks like, so like you can just snap it right off right there. And uh, you know what? We might as well make this a full figure review. It's the first one in the line. Let's go ahead and see how that web gear comes off. Because I believe it's just a... There we go. I want you guys to see this. We might not do it on the other figure just because it's the same web gear, but we can take this web gear off and I believe the head pops off as well. So they are modular and let me go ahead and zoom out just a hair. Very cool. And then, yeah, you can just pop that head right back on there. I feel like I'm playing with the GI Joe. I feel like this is some GI Joe uh, or Cobra Trooper, rather, that I don't know. And I'm like, oh, is he is some G.I. Joe I don't know? But man, look at this. Look at that silver highlighting. This is a fantastic figure. But let's go ahead and get that web gear back on him real quick. Go ahead and take that head back off. Oh, so satisfying when it pops off and just pops back on, no problems. Get that web gear back on him. Head back on him. Snaps on perfectly. And then, yeah, just a simple, the engineering on this. Kudos to Skeletron and their team for just, and the Marauders folks for putting this together and making it so, so easy and so solid. Won't hear any complaints from this YouTube reviewer, that's for sure. At least not yet. But with that being said, Wolf Trooper is more than just a figure himself, as I am often fond of saying. Get him to stand up there. Got his rocker ankle off a little bit. He does come with some accessories, and I want to start with this accessory because it caught my eye first. This is the stand. It is a clear stand with the Skeletron logo, and it has three pegs. What a genius idea. You don't have to have your figure just standing straight up and down. You can put them in some sort of action pose, and the triangles obviously can slide together, and you could, you could have like a little dio with these stands, and it would look fantastic having these figures in different poses. So fantastic, another excellent, excellent move by uh, the Skeletron, tree, Skeletron team. Okay, he does come with a small pistol. And again, it's cast in red and black with some silver highlights, and I'll just zoom in here so we can get a good look at it. And it's very futuristic, as it should be. Same on both sides. Very cool. And then he gets a larger assault rifle or blaster rifle. Again, in that red and black with a little bit of silver highlights and it looks fantastic. And I like the fact that you could have him holding it or you could have him hold it up up here. There's a little opening. Uh, the the uh, clip does stay in. It doesn't come out. I mean, it is a four inch figure, so probably not the best to try to have it come out. Let me look at that. That gun is fantastic. And then uh, he does come with this interesting backpack accessory, which here we go. So what I want you to see here is that it is a cool backpack accessory with, you know, it looks like it's a jetpack, I imagine, for flying in space. But at first I thought, wow, these are really loose. And then I realized these are gauntlets. These are Wolverine style gauntlets that attach to it and came in the package that way. Look at this. So smart. I always talk about, I want my figures, I'm going to zoom out here real quick. I always say, I want my figures to be able to hold all their accessories. And as you can see, he can definitely hold these, uh, wow, these crazy 
Wolverine blades, gauntlets, whatever you want to call them. And the backpack's fantastic. Of course, it's got a peg in the back. It can hold on. And then we have a couple openings right here, which I'm not really sure what those are for yet. Maybe it's for some other thing. Maybe it's shared with another figure and they go in, uh, something plugs in there. I don't see anything on the pistol or the assault rifle that lends me to believe that it pegs into the back. So stay tuned to that. But either way, very cool. And then finally, we do get uh, the Wolf Troopers helmet. And I will zoom in so you can see that a lot better. You know, it's got this crazy, it looks like teeth on the side. I mean, it looks like a wolf. It's crazy or a dog or whatever you want to call it. But man, it's fantastic. And so, yeah, if we actually zoom out a little bit here, we can take the figure. And let's just see what this looks like real quick. I imagine it's going to fit like a glove. Oh, did you hear that snap? That was so satisfying. Wow, this figure is awesome. I mean, I wouldn't even know if my camera would flip and focus. There we, wow, my camera is having a very hard time focusing on that, I apologize folks. Let me just zoom out all the way. I'll bring him in close. Wow, that looks so awesome. I'm sorry I'm gushing over this so much, but I have been waiting for these figures and the Skeletron, Skeletron team delivered. And this is just the first figure. So with that being said, let's go ahead, take our final look at the, uh, the Wolf Trooper. And then, yeah, I'll make sure to get the side-by-side -side up so you can see some of the other uh, configurations with his weapons. Check that out. Make sure it looks really cool. And then, yeah, I think it's time that we move on and check out the next four-inch figure from Skeletron. Okay, moving on, we have the Red Shadows Gyre Wolf. And as you can see, uh, first appearances, the body, the helmet, the gun, everything's the same from the last figure we just reviewed, but it does have an unmasked face. And yeah, we'll get into to who this uh, is representative of in a moment. But again, with this card art, it is fantastic. Looks like he's stepping through a portal from hell. I mean, look at this fire in the background. And of course, again, the Skeletron logo. And this figure is just fantastic looking. Moving over to the back, we have the exact same back with the uh, first, uh, what do we have? The first six figures plus the Robo Skull. And then of course we have the code name Gyre Roof. This is data file RS006. File name Gary Goggles, primary military specialty uh, intelligence, secondary military specialty psychological operations. And then uh, I'll give you a second if you want to read that. And then, of course, we have the barcode down here, the Skeletron logo, Marauders task, or Marauder Task Force, and the same stuff we saw in the other video. Or, I'm sorry, in the other review. Um, so, real quick, if you don't know who this is representative of, it's, uh, it's Gary. Uh, he was a good friend to a lot of us. Uh, unfortunately, passed away way too early in his life. And Gary, I don't even think you can use the word loved G.I. Joe, he loved the history of G.I. Joe. He loved learning how G.I. Joes were made. He did a lot of work in the community to bring the community together and really try to make it about community and not just about, oh, I've got to have all these toys in my collection and who's got the biggest mound of toys at the end of the day. Gary wanted to make it a true community. Sometimes rub people the wrong way, but if you knew Gary, that's just the way it was. He was going to tell you like it, like it was. Um, and so, yeah, uh, Gary's had a number of figures made, uh, of him because of his contributions to the hobby of collecting specifically GI Joe. And yeah, he is now represented in Skeletron and you know, this is, this is what Gary looked like and he wore goggles. That's why he goes by Gary goggles. And yeah, I can't wait to actually check out this figure. Uh, so with that being said, let's get Gyre Wolf out of the package and see what this one and how it stacks up against the Wolf Trooper. Okay, we've got Gyre Wolf out of the package and immediately 90% uh, of this figure is the exact same figure we just looked at. So I'm not going to bore you by going over 
the same articulation. I'm just going to talk about what's different. And obviously, the first thing is the head sculpt. And like I said, this is based on Gary Goggles. And this pretty much looks like what Gary looked like. It's kind of weird to be holding uh, one of your friends. and uh, Or at least I, I'd like to think that Gary thought of me as a friend. Um, in your in your hand as an action figure, you know, an effigy uh, forever in plastic. Very cool. Now, one of the other things I am enjoying about this one is he's definitely got some different uh, tampos on, like the G on this side. I think he's got, an, I don't know what that is. That's kind of a cool design. Looks like a strange arrow in red and white, or red. And then, of course, we have the Skeltron logo. And yeah, this is the exact same figure. Otherwise, same articulation, just uh, different different paint apps, but looks very cool. Let me get a close up of that so you can really see even down to his crazy goggles he used to wear. That's crazy. That's exactly what they look like. Guy probably could have made millions selling those things. Always had crazy goggles. So yeah, this is the figure. And of course, once again, much like the Wolf Trooper, Gyre Wolf is more than just the figure himself. He does come with his own accessories as well. So, tell me if you've heard this one before. This one comes with a clear stand with three pegs. So, again, very great idea. I love this idea from Skeletron. He also comes with the same pistol as the Wolf Trooper, but it is cast in silver and black with a red highlight. So, again, getting the, use, the most out of your molds, really good. Looks fantastic. And that same... Uh, rocket pack with these gauntlets that just snap on so easily on and off so easily very cool i like this silver the silver paint on this has done so well i even like those little triangles on the bottom of course there's that and finally the helmet which is cast or not cast in silver but painted silver with a red visor and a nice silver uh outline on the visor similar to the look of his goggles on his head so i really like that little piece of attention there as well again that that uh front of the helmet looking like a wolf mask or wolf teeth i like it a lot now gyre wolf does come with a couple different accessories and one of them is this uh translucent blue with silver spe uh, specks in it and I, you know how we talked at the beginning of the video, I said, uh, when we were looking at his card art, and I said, it looked like he was coming through hell. It kind of reminds me that it's like he's stepping out of a, a temporal dimension or something like that. It's really cool. And again, it's translucent, and it's just got these uh, silver speckles in it. It looks very nice, of course. You know, he's going to stand on it. It's got those three pegs like the clear stand. But man, this is really neat. And to go along with that really neat uh, translucent blue portal... We have an alternate translucent uh, blue head of Gary Goggles, a.k.a. Gyre Wolf. So maybe this is just like supposed to be a hologram, and when he's in hologram mode, that's what uh, you're seeing. I don't know. I don't know much about the backstory for these characters. I need to really kind of brush myself up on what's going on, but very cool. Um yeah, so very cool. I'll make sure to get a side-by-side -side up there so you can see uh, what that looks like. But yeah, these two figures are fantastic together. And yeah, let's just really quick bring out the two side-by-side. -side. Hopefully you've had a chance to see the, uh, them geared up. And yeah, as you can see, both these figures look fantastic. Same body, uh, same body different heads. Don't know why my camera is just horribly out of focus today. Come on, camera, work with me here. There you go. Fantastic. But with that being said, we do have one more figure to go. So let's get that final vintage-inspired O-ring figure out and take a look at that one. All right, here we have it, the Wolf Trooper in the vintage O-ring style uh, feature. And before we get into this, if you could like this video, I really appreciate it. Hopefully you're enjoying this, learning about Skeletron. And make sure you drop a comment. Tell me which one of these three figures you like the most. Tell me if you're going to pick up these figures as well. Or if you're going to go over to Marauder Task Force and pick up some of their figures. Lots of stuff going on. And I want to support, I want you to support Skeletron because 
They are putting out a fantastic product. And even if you didn't get it on the Kickstarter, I'm sure they're going to have some of these figures available. And yeah, let's jump into the O-Ring inspired Wolf Trooper. Now, looking at this immediately, you see the, the orange and red blast effects and it just screams G.I. Joe, specifically the very early 82, 83, 84 style with that vintage card art. And again, this card art is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Packed with accessories, new swivel wrist battle grip. So that's very cool. And down here at the bottom, we do see grindstone toys. And I want to take a moment to talk about grindstone toys for a second. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, grindstone toys is putting out their own version of O-ring figures called call sign longbow. And they had a Kickstarter. It was wildly successful and their figures are actually going to be dropping this year. So you can make sure to go check out call sign longbow. I'll make sure to link their information in the description as, uh, below as well, because they've got some fantastic figures coming out O-rings inspired and the best part about call sign longbow is you don't necessarily have to wait to own one of their figures today because this figure the wolf trooper o-ring vintage style actually shares the same body buck as one of the call sign longbow figures that is coming out and i believe his name's ghost i could be wrong but i'm pretty sure it's ghost they share the same uh body which means if you wind up picking up this figure, you've actually gotten yourself an early preview of Call Sign Longbow's uh, figures that are coming out. Call Sign Longbow is going to be another 80s inspired uh, line of toys where it's going to be Cold War based. Lots of fun stuff. You've got military, sci fi. Is this starting to sound familiar? Of course it is. Everybody's favorite uh, military brand, G.I. Joe, they are picking up that mantle and telling their own story with O-ring vintage inspired figures. But that being said, we are here to talk about Wolf Trooper. This card art is fantastic. We've got a whole bunch of accessories up here. We've got some accessories on the sides. This just screams G.I. Joe vintage style O-ring and I love it. I, it was hard opening those other figures. It's going to be very difficult to open this one. But let's spin it over and let's look at the back. And this is very cool. Now look at that. We get a Wolf Trooper classic style file card. Probably says the same thing as before. And then down here on the bottom is very interesting. We have Skeletron himself, the Red Shadows Commander, and his file card. Wow. We got a two for one figure here right now. And look, Skeletron head change requires screwdriver tool. Man, you don't get any more vintage style than actually taking your figures apart. I am so ready for this. So let's get the Wolf Trooper out of this package and see what all this craziness is about. Okay, here we have it. This is Gyre Wolf in the vintage style O-ring build. Now, we said earlier that the modern version was about a little over four, a little under four and a half inches or four and a quarter inches tall. Let's see where the retro style is. I don't know about you guys, but I'll make it a little, little taller. That seems like true blue three and three quarters right there. Man, if you like three and three quarters as much as I do, you are in heaven right now because this figure is fantastic. Man, of course, he's got the O-ring style articulation. Head has... The classic turn can't quite do a 360, but that's okay. Can look left, can look right, can look down. Uh, 360 at the uh, shoulder. It does have a bicep cut right there. Elbow bend. And then, of course, that 360 degree wrist rotation. Bends at the knee, bends at the hip. And look at this. This is just... O-ring, true and true, right there. There it is, folks, the O-ring. Fantastic. Let's get, let's get zoomed in here and really look at the, the sculpt and detail on this figure. Wow. Just looks fantastic. Look at the back. Looks like something might be able to snap on there. I don't know. But yeah, fantastic. All the way down to the boots. Cannot... I cannot see a fault in this figure, folks. Can you? Looks fantastic. Man, paint apps are wonderful. I can't complain. I can't complain so far. 
I am, uh, this is, this is Hasbro. This is multi-billion dollar company level good by a small company. That being said, you know the drill. Jar Wolf O-Rings figure is more than just the figure himself. We, we have a quite a few accessories to get through. So let's just jump into it and we'll start with the most basic one, the stand. Again, this is a clear stand with a single peg reminiscent of vintage O-Ring figures. And we do see if we spin it around, maybe I can get the light to catch it just right. We do see it says Grindstone Toys because this will be the same one that Call Sign Longbow uses, I imagine, when they come out. And yeah, very cool. Um, he does come with that same backpack. Now there's that backpack. It's a little bit different design because it is an O-ring figure. And again, it's being used with the call sign longbow folks. So they probably had to make some changes to get the most out of the mold. But we got a couple little pegs right here and probably hold some accessories. And then we got the peg that goes into the back. Very cool. Cast in all black. Uh, moving forward, we do have a number of accessories and we will start with their power sword. And wow, this is just a really cool thing. Uh, I'm going to try to get, get zoomed in there so you can see that crazy skull on it. So it's black with a translucent blade. And this isn't with... It's interesting because the skull's that way, but if you spin around, it's upside down, but you can actually put it like that, and then you have it again. Very smart, very smart design there. Uh, if I can get this stupid phone to focus. It is having a really hard time today. So very cool, because this did not actually come with the modern era figure, but you could use it with the modern era figure, I imagine. So let's zoom back out here for a moment. And he does come with a... I don't know what you call this. I know my camera is having just a heck of a time focusing today. Come on, camera. Work with me here. There we go. So yeah, very cool how you can see... Uh, I guess this is a double blade that you can hold in his hand. It's very cool. Just casting all red. Very sharp. Very sharp. He does come with a small red pistol. Again, the gyro, uh, sorry, the wolf trooper came with the same red pistol. This one's designed a little bit differently, but that's okay. Again, probably going to be reused with some other call sign longbow figures. Casting all red, a little pistol. And then we have, of course, the rifle, the larger rifle style figure. And this is done in all red as well. And again, slightly different design, but still really cool to get that. And then finally, oh, well, not finally, we do get the mask. This is that same uh, Wolf Trooper mask, slightly different, but pretty close. And yeah, it should just pop right on the figure. So let's take a moment to just try that out real quick. If I can get my darn camera to focus. So here's the figure. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time today. Um, figure, helmet. Oh, look at that. It even fits in there perfectly. Now, obviously, if you have the helmet on, you can still turn him and, you know, it'll work just fine. But you can see that it's really meant just to kind of stay straight on there. But again, fantastic how you can bend his head down. It goes right in there. Or you can lift it up a little bit and, you know, give it a little bit of a turn. Very cool. And I'll make sure to put something up of him all geared up so you can see what he looks like because it's very, very, very cool. Wow. Okay, well, with, with that being said, we've looked at the O-ring figure, fantastic figure. Let's go back. Let's do some final thoughts. Let's do some comparisons because I got a couple different figures I want to compare both the modern eras to as well as this vintage O-ring as well. So let me get, uh, let me cut away for a minute, get some stuff set up, and I'll meet you back here in just a second. Okay, here's our final uh, overview of the first three action figures. I mean, technically the fourth action figure, and I will bring that up here momentarily, but these are the first four inch and three and three quarter inch O-ring vintage inspired figures from Skeletron. We have modern era Gyre Wolf, vintage O-ring Gyre Wolf, or I'm sorry, Wolf Trooper, Wolf Trooper, Gyre Wolf. I have to make sure I get that right. And the other figure that I didn't uh, mention, but I have done a review on it in the past, is the Skeledrone figure, which is this little guy right here. And he is part of the lineup, so we're just going to say him right here. He comes in a three-pack. I believe you can actually order them from Skeletron right now. They are available um, on their website. But that being said, something interesting I believe I read was that you could actually 
pop this head off of this guy. Maybe. It's kind of hard with these limbs poking me every which way. There we go. So, as you can see, it's just a ball joint, so let's just test this theory out real quick. Let's remove that helmet. Let's remove that head. And there you go. You have a Skeletron Trooper or a Skeledrone Trooper. How cool is that and how smart is that? Now, let's see if we can take it an inch further. Can we put the helmet back on it? Oh, unfortunately, we can't put the head helmet back on it. That doesn't take away from the figure. It just would have been an even crazier bonus if that helmet would have fit over that. You know, that's very cool though. So we can swap out your Skeledrone heads with the heads on both Gyre Wolf and the Wolf Trooper. So let's go ahead and get that regular head back on him. There we go. And of course we can put the helmet back on as well. And then another thing I did forget to mention and I forgot to review it, I'll make sure, I'll, I'll have it up on a, on a video as well or a side-by-side. -side. I forgot to mention that the alternate head that comes with the retro figure, so you can actually have the leader of Skeletron, Skeletron himself. And there's his head. You can see it is on a plastic, uh, vintage-inspired peg, so you can get that three-quarter turn action. And yeah, you just have to actually take the screw out of the back of here. You can't see it very well, but there is a screw in there with the Phillips head screwdriver. Take him apart like you used to do with your old G.I. Joe figures, and you can pop this head on as well. And like I said, I'll throw that up so you can see it because I don't want you guys to miss out on that uh, because it is pretty neat. Now, let me do this. Let me remove our O-ring figure for a moment. Let's just do some quick comparisons uh, with these two guys against part of their inspiration, and that would be a G.I. Joe. So let me just put this Snake Eyes figure out here who does not want to stand up very well because he is kind of old. He does have a a little bit of a loose torso, but I did want you guys to see just as a comparative how they stack up with G.I. Joe figures, which evidently I'm not going to be able to do because he's not wanting to stand up. That's okay. That's what we have pegs for or uh, stands for. Maybe. You know, the funny thing is I was talking about the build quality and saying these guys compare to Hasbro. Hasbro, uh, I'm going to put you on the spot here and say... These figures from Skeletron are better than this Snake Eyes figure that I have. Now, granted, these figures are pumped out by the tens of thousands. These are probably pumped out by a couple thousand. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the MOQ is. Uh, minimum order quantity, in case you're curious what MOQ stands for. Um, but, yeah, here's just a quick comparison of these two figures. Who do you like more, Snake Eyes or the Wolf Trooper? I mean, yeah, it's Snake Eyes. He's got a very loose torso, but he does have a torso bend. This one doesn't seem to have that, which, you know, do you like that as a takeaway from it? Let me know in the comments. I want to know what you guys think. But yeah, there's a quick comparison of the modern era G.I. Joe against the new Skeletron figures. And let's switch it out now. And I want to do a little more comparisons with this O-ring figure because, like I said, I'm really excited about this guy. And I have two different O-rings that I want to compare this guy against. One is Hasbro's latest offering. Again, we're going to use Snake Eyes as an example because he's right here. And Strike Force Alpha, which was another Kickstarter line that actually beat Skeletron and Call Sign Longbow, Grindstone Toys, uh, to the punch with their Kickstarter and getting produced a uh, mass amount of action figures. I haven't actually done a review on these figures, but they are fantastic. They are a paramilitary team, good guys versus bad guys. And they do also have that same articulation, but it's at the uh, forearm. It's not at the wrist. And theirs are actually modular. You can pop those right off and put different hands on them. But I did want to compare them because, as you can see, they are very, very similar. And, you know... Look at this. We, and, when then, and then you got, you know, your, this is your Hasbro offering. And some people liked these and some people didn't. Some people said they were a little soft. Uh, the plastic, the features were, you know, not as detailed. Now, I will admit this Snake Eyes, again, it's cast in all black, so it's not really fair. But they are softer designs versus the, the sharp, very sharp details on this Wolf Trooper figure. 
And again, I really like the design at the wrist level. You know, I don't believe you can pop, pop, pop those off. Maybe you can. Uh, I'm not going to try it with this one. But this figure feels solid. This figure feels fantastic. And of the three, I've got to say it feels the most solid. It just... This one feels solid as well. Don't get me wrong. He's just a little a little gummier, I want to say. Like, see, there's this a little bit of issues. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. And Strike Force Alpha came out with some fantastic stuff. I really need to get my review out for them. Um, but we've got three O-ring figures right here, all produced in the last year, year and a half. I'm going to pose a question to you. And maybe I should do a video on it. Let me know in the comments what you think. Are we going to have, as collectors, an O-ring renaissance in 2024? Starting with Strike Force Alpha, and there's some other toys that are doing it as well, but Strike Force Alpha is whom I've purchased, I've supported. And then we have, of course, Skeletron. We have Call Sign Longbow. And there's a there's a host of other O-ring figures out. There are folks that are making O-ring figures at home. And you can buy them in Etsy stores or, or similar places like that. And I feel like 2024 is going to be an O-ring renaissance. If you love O-ring as much as I do, you are in for a treat. So, um, yeah. You know what? Let's put these guys away for a second because I do want to bring out... I forgot to do this. So let me bring out Gyre Wolf real quick because there's one thing I wanted to show you guys and I completely skipped over it because I was talking about O-rings and wanted to get to that figure, and I forgot how awesome the figures from uh, that are partnered with Marauder Task Force that I need to bring out a Marauder Task Force figure for you guys to check out as well, to do a comparison. Check out this comparison. Now, this is Marauder Task Force's um, modular figure set with a... Battle, uh, battle mask, battle helmet, I can't remember what they call it, but obviously you can see what it's supposed to represent. It comes with this sticker. And if you can't figure out who this is supposed to be, then I, I feel sorry for you. But yeah, there is no shared parts between these, but you could, I can, I can sense almost that you could pop out different pieces of each figure and put them on the other. So let's just do that for example. If Jire Wolf doesn't, mind me decapitating him for a moment. I want to see what this helmet, this looks like on that figure. Because I bet those pegs are identical. Well, let's find out. Oh, look at that. How about that for a crazy space trooper? Marauder Task Force has these heads available right now. At least I, they were when I last checked. So you can actually, and they have different ones. This isn't the only version, but how about this chrome head on this cr silver slash chrome body? So you can really up the playability of these figures. If you like taking figure uh, photography, wow, you've got a crazy awesome figure to take a picture of right there. If you don't want to, you know, and conversely, we can we can put that head on there. Now we've got a cyborg Gary goggles. Absolutely crazy. So yeah, Marauder Task Force in conjunction with Skeletron have helped produce these new figures and they are absolutely fantastic. So let me get Gyre Wolf stood up here. Let me clear out this area. Let me bring Wolf Trooper back into the mix. And finally, of course, Wolf Trooper O-Ring style. Wow. If you guys are on the fence about Skeletron and you missed the Kickstarter, it's okay. Please make sure you support this line. It is fantastic. There's some great stuff coming up and they're releasing stuff in batches. And of course, the, 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 the cherry on top is going to be the Robo Skull aircraft, which I should have two different ones of those because I went all in on that Kickstarter. So I should be getting one of everything when it's all said and done. Definitely, definitely, definitely going to pick up a second set of each one of these figures because I need a mint on card set. I might need another O-ring of this guy so I can display him as Skeletron and as the Wolf Trooper. But 
That being said, make sure you like the video. It really helps out a lot with the channel. I hope you enjoyed this. Otherwise, I'm Mark. You've been watching Coffee with Toys, and I will see you later.